Okay, this screencast is about program organization. So in a previous class, you put all of the code for your project in a single file. This is problematic for two reasons. Number one, it's not a very logical organization for large projects. And also for large projects, if you make a simple change, you have to recompile all the lines of the program. And so for projects with 10, of millions of lines of code that's going to take a long time it's also going to be hard for you to understand uh, you know tens of millions of lines of code if they're not organized better so that's what we're going to do in this uh, in this screencast so let's just go over this program just very quickly it's simple uh, there's one class uh, it consists of a vector of doubles there's a read method that reads numbers from the input stream, stores them in the vector, and then we have an average method that just averages the numbers in the vector and returns them. Then the main function simply creates an instance of the class, reads in a sequence of numbers, and then prints the average to the output stream, and that's it. So the general rule of thumb is that class definitions go into a .h file and class implementations, the methods, we're going to put those into a .cc file and then I'm going to have a .cc file for the main function and I'll also have a .h file for it. So let's just run this very quickly so we compile it. And I type in a sequence of numbers. And I hit Control D to terminate the input stream. And it prints the average. So now to divide the program up into the files, I already have a numbers.cc. So rather than retyping, I'm going to copy. So I need a numbers.h. I need a main.cc. And I need a main.h. So let's look at numbers.h first. So in a .h file, we put the class definition. So that means I'm going to delete everything else below that. And I leave the includes. And I need the includes because I'm making reference to iStream and CN. Those are defined in the IO stream library. And I'm declaring an instance of the vector class that's defined in the vector library and of course those were using the uh, standard namespace here so that's my dot h file for the cc file i want the methods that implement the numbers class so there's that now in order to compile this we're actually going to compile the dot cc files but in order to compile this, not only do I need definitions for iStream and the methods of the vector class like pushback and size, I also need the definitions of numbers read and numbers average. And, and all of this information is in the file numbers.h. So notice that in numbers.h, I have the include for IO stream, I have the include for vector, and of course I have the definition of the numbers class. Notice also that I'm using double quotes here. We use double quotes for local includes, the ones that you create for your project. And we use angle brackets for systems includes like IO stream and vector. Now let's take a look at main.cc. This is going to contain only the main function. And I'm going to also have a main.h for it. 
Now, in order to compile main.cc, I have to have a, de a definition for numbers. I have to have a definition for cn, for indel, and for cout. So the definition for cn, cout, and indel is in the IO stream library. And of course, the definition of numbers is in the numbers.h. So that's what my main.h is going to look like. I need to include IO stream. I need to include numbers.h. I'm going to be using the standard namespace, and that's it. So here are my four files. Let's just go back through these. So my main function is in main.cc, and I include the header main.h. Main.h includes everything that I need to compile the main function, and that's IO stream and the local include file numbers.h. Then I have my numbers.h, and that mainly defines the numbers class, and then its implementation appears in numbers.cc. So to compile this, and let me let me just get rid of my executable. To compile this, I can't compile any individual file directly. So for example, if I try to compile main.cc, it tells me that numbers.read is undefined. It tells me that numbers.average is undefined. And of course, those are defined in numbers.cc. If I try to compile numbers.cc, then it tells me that there is no main. So what we need to do here, the information that the compiler needs to produce an executable is actually spread across these two files. So what I need to do is I need to compile them separately, but I need to tell the compiler to compile an object code, do not try to produce an executable. And the way that I do that is by using the dash C switch. So now if I compile main.cc, notice I didn't get any annoying error messages, and I actually have a new file in my directory main.o. Dot .o means object code. I do the same thing for numbers. And again, no annoying error messages, and I have the file numbers.o. Once I have the .os for each .cc, now what I can do is I can link them together. And the linking step combines the object files, and it also grabs the machine code for any of the routines that I use from the standard lot, the system libraries, and it puts all of that into my executable a dot out. And now this works just as before. I can also compile this by just putting all of the source files, giving, giving the compiler all the source files. And I can also do that by using a regular expression where star matches with anything. That also works. Now one problem with this is I'm expanding headers multiple times. So notice that in numbers.cc, I'm including numbers.h. And notice in main.h, I'm including numbers.h. Well, I only want to pre-process or expand uh, or include numbers.h one time. And so for a large, complicated project, you may end up processing a complicated include file hundreds of times. And you really only need to process it once. So the way we're going to solve this problem of multiple header expansion or multiple includes is the first time that I process this file, I'm going to define a symbol unique to the file. And I, I usually use the name of the file underscore H because it mirrors the name of the file. So the first time I pre-process this command or this file, I'm going to define this symbol. But I only want to do this if I haven't done it before. 
and I can capture that by using the if not defined preprocessor directive. So if this symbol is not defined, then I know that I have not processed this file yet. And then the first thing I do is I define it, and then I'll never process this file a second or third or multiple times. And then, of course, you want to never forget to have an end if for your if not defined preprocessor directive. Uh, this will actually keep you up uh, quite late at night with a lot of pain. It might be useful for you to intentionally leave one of these off, see what kind of compiler errors you get just so you'll uh, know to spot them. And now I'm going to do the same thing with main.h. And so what I'm doing here is if I haven't processed this file before, then main underscore h won't be defined. So I'm processing it. Now I define it. It won't get processed again. And then, of course, I have to terminate my preprocessor uh, if statement with the end if. So let, let's just look very quickly at numbers.h. So this is a, a general template that you're going to follow for all .h files. You're going to check to see if some symbol unique to that file is defined. If it's not, then you know that you haven't processed this before. You're going to find that unique symbol. Then you'll have your normal, your, you know, your system includes, your local includes, your, you know, what namespace you're using, the class definition, maybe some other definitions, and of course the termination of the if statement. And this will compile just uh, like it did before. In fact, let me just uh, remove a dot out and star dot o so we can start over again. So that gives me my dot o files. That gives me my dot o files and now I can link those to produce an executable. And now I have my executable. Just like that. So those are the basics of program organization and then also we're using preprocessor directives to prevent multiple header expansion or multiple header inclusion.